Hello, everybody. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly today and just like a little tank update. Um, nothing new to report on the tank this week anyway. But I wanted to do a little um, discussion briefly about leopard grasses. And um, I get a lot of questions asked about their, you know, they always have a different, basically a little biological clock, so to speak, that, um, you know, they're, they wake up and go to bed at different times, you know, than us, so, or that our lights are, are set for on the tank. So I wanted to talk briefly about that and uh, what I know and I've learned. Um, first off, most leopard grasses, not all, and they can come from different areas, but most leopard grasses are generally found in the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and if we're talking about, uh, you know, people that live in the United States, for example, I mean, that's a huge time difference. So a lot of people will talk about how their, their leopard, their new leopard grass they just got, um, comes out at, you know, two o'clock in the morning, you know, um, way out, you know, several hours after their tank lights have went out for the day, you know, and how to feed them and what to do. Um, and it is kind of an odd thing for grasses, but I can tell you. Um, like mine, I always get, I've never had a big issue with mine because I do get them from, a, I'm lucky to have a great local fish store um, by me that, um, you know, has uh, leopard wrasses in all the time and they're nice and healthy. They're always eating frozen food. And I always leave them at the fish store for a good two weeks. And one nice thing about that is the, you know, the, the uh, leopard wrasse then gets used to their life cycle. So when I bring them home, I don't have an issue with the leopard wrasse getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, thinking it's, you know, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning or whatever, you know, the, the situation. But rest assured, um, in time, the leopard wrasse will get used to your lighting cycle and he will start coming out at normal times. Like, for example, um, there's a, uh, I have two Melagris leopard wrasses. There's one, this little tyke. He was not even an inch big when I got him. He was so small, I was kind of nervous about getting one that little, but he's grown quite nicely. And then I have a second one. There's a, my Blue Star. I have two of those. That's the big one. And then I have a, another one, a smaller one around somewhere. He's in the back. Um, for example, the, the, the Blue Star and the Melagris both come out around, my lights come on from 10 o'clock in the morning and they stay on this like a uh, dawn to dusk time schedule. So the lights start ramping down in the evening and then they turn completely off at 10 p.m. from 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So my Blue Stars, uh, they come out around 9, 9.30, you can set your watch by it. So does my um, Melagris. They both come out, They all four of them come out at the same time. And they stay out, and there's the there's the bigger one. I've had him for quite a bit longer, but he was probably an inch when I got him too. I was also nervous about him, but he's like gotten huge. So there's the two blue stars, and they both come out around nine nine thirty every single morning without fail. Um, now it took a couple weeks to get completely adjusted to that time schedule, even after bringing them home from the fish store. Um, all all four of them, and. Um, they go to bed. The blue stars go to bed around seven o'clock every night. I mean, once they go to bed, you could look at the clock and know that it's around seven o'clock. Not exactly seven o'clock, but like you know, right around seven. Um, the melagrises they stay out until about eight o'clock every night, with regardless, you know. Um, so. Uh, you know, they do get adjusted. My Moyer's Rass, which he's all in bed because, and this is another thing that's interesting, my Moyer's Rass um, generally is, comes out around 8 o'clock in the morning for some reason, and he's always been that way since I've had him. I've had him, you know, a couple years. He comes out about 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, he then would go to bed around 5, 5.30 without fail every night. However, which is odd, and I, I'm still kind of wondering about this. It's kind of odd, but um, when we and when we have a time change, you know, like here in the, you know, the Midwest, we're on you know Central Time. So when, when the time change and the clocks are you know set set back in the fall, the Moyers Rass now goes to bed at like 4:30 or 4 o'clock. So it's odd. So and then in the spring it'll go back to normal. It's it's just a strange strange behavior. I'm not really sure about that. 
So that's the deal with with leopard wrasses. Um, and you know, um, as I responded to somebody um, on here, you know, people that have issues with leopard wrasses coming out at three o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, midnight, whatever. Um, it's the the key to the survival of a leopard ras is you want them to get eating frozen food as quickly as possible. So if you get it from, say, you know, uh, any kind of online retailer um, and they're not eating, the key is to get them to eat. So even, you know, you may have to, and it's unfortunate, you know, and it's kind of, it makes you, you know, it's kind of a, a bummer, but you will have to stake out your tank in the middle of the night, you know, when you know he's been coming out of the sand and put food in your tank, you know, and, you know, and, and just do extra water changes or whatever you got to do to keep the, the, you know, the nitrates and everything from getting out of whack on you. But that's what, what you're going to have to do until they're adjusted to our time schedule, you know. And also another thing that I, and I always recommend this to people, I have the Ecotex, you know, MP15s, or uh, excuse me, XR15s, I'm sorry, thinking of my, my wave, my power head. Um, and... Uh, I always recommend, to, you know, in, in a, a reef aquarium, to have your uh, aquarium lights set at a, like a dusk or a dawn to dusk schedule, because you know, regardless of what people think, you know, fish do have schedules. Mine have schedules. You know, when the light starts to dim, you'll see everybody but the tang and the, uh, you know, Solarensis fairy wrasse go in the sand. You know, I mean, everybody, everybody's in bed by. The, the light squad at 10, everybody's in bed by 9.30 that sleeps in the sand. You know, a holocaust is usually the last to go in the sand. And there's you see the earmuff there, and the, there's two yellow uh, wrasses, and then my melanaris. Those four are holocaust wrasses, and they, they usually stay out a little bit longer than the leopards. You know, but, um, you know, I mean... And even like, you know, he's a, a, you know, my red chorus wrasse also, you know, a lot of sand sleeping wrasses, they will have time schedules and he does, you know, he goes in the sand, uh, you know, he's out usually around same time every morning, nine o'clock, and then he goes in the sand around 6.30 or 7, you know, depending on his mood, I guess. Um... But, so, it, you know, it's not it's not anything to worry about other than the hassle. You know, you got to just make sure and be aware of it. And, you know, when, they're, when they do come out, make sure they're, you're feeding them. Try everything. You know, I always, uh, with a new leopard, if it's not eating, it's always best. Like, my, my tank doesn't have a huge uh, copepod population. So, pods get eaten up real fast with leopard wrasses. I mean, they're just gone. I can't keep a mandarin in my tank ever because they just wouldn't get enough to eat. So it's you know if, I mean I, I would dump a you know dump a bottle of pods in there, um, feed a mysis, shrimp. Mine eat mysis, frozen mysis, shrimp. Uh, that's what they love to eat. Um, fish eggs. I'll feed them fish eggs a couple times a week as a treat. They love that um, stuff like that. Um, it, you know if you have to, you can certainly um, try brine shrimp. Brine shrimp's like candy to fish. It doesn't really have much nutritional value though. So that's really you know shouldn't be should be used sparingly if at all um so but definitely that's just that's the deal with the the lighting you know i don't know some people say it's an internal clock i believe tend to believe it's more of an internal clock than like a jet lag type thing because some people say well it's a jet lag well fish they're not humans for one i don't believe in a jet lag thing so to speak in my personal opinion um i think it's more of an internal clock in the fish you know and and they're they're used to a certain uh, time schedule of where they come from and that's the schedule they keep here until they get used to our time schedule so um, but they but they uh, obviously do mine are out right now here it is in the late afternoon so um, you know they're definitely um, you know just uh that, you know no reason to be alarmed or anything like that just keep an eye on it and when when you see them out if it's in the middle of the night turn the lights on and, and feed the little guy or or keep the lights off maybe some room lights you don't know, scare them and and just feed them and the biggest key is to get them eaten as soon as possible and the rest will just fall into place on their own all right everybody thanks for watching happy reefing